Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. Mary interviews Jesus on the subject of Jesus and Mary's dealings, recorded on the 23rd of September 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session three. Hi everyone. Welcome to session three about uh, Jesus and Mary's dealings with others. Um, and I'm Mary and this is Jesus and we're here together um, to just discuss with you. We've done a couple of sessions previous in this series. So we talked about um, the way we generally deal with other people, the people we choose to interact with and how we make those decisions. And in session two, we talked about um, how what our priorities are in life are and how that affects the way we use our time. Mm. So in this session... Well, a lot of it, a lot of this session is going to be based upon session two. So if the person hasn't listened to session two, then we probably would recommend to you to have a listen to that because because the, we're going to refer to the priorities that we, we, we discuss with people in session two in this session. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So the questions that we, the main question that we answered about how we prioritise the use of our time um, has a large impact and bearing on what we're going to discuss today. Mm. But also we talked in that session about the people that we refuse to interact with mm. and that we'll also we'll be referring to that during this session as well. So yes. um, we recommend watching session two if you haven't uh, watched it prior to this. Yes. What questions do we refuse to answer? Wow. Again, I think we have to refer to session two. Yeah. <laughs> it's very similar to the people we don't answer, isn't it? Really? So, well, in particular, again, if we focus on the first three or four things, um, my first feelings are we love answering questions about love. Yeah. We love answering questions about truth. <laughs> we love answering questions that involve personal truth. And we love answering questions uh, that involve a person being, you know, humble or learning how to be humble and so forth. So all of those kind of questions, they're probably going to get answered. Although remember that if if it's answered by an email, probably not, because yeah. we don't have the time to answer people by email, yeah. and particularly to give the concise answers that we would normally give via email is very very difficult. So it's much better if we have a conversation about their question yeah. than it is to answer it about email. But but those four sets of questions are probably some of the most important questions for us. Yeah, so. that's right. And and those kinds of questions we routinely um, send off to our Frequently Asked Questions account of so course. that they can be added to a list and we do a video to yes. answer those questions. Yes. So we may not answer the question directly via email if a person sent in an FAQ, but we probably will put those questions on a list somewhere to answer in the future. Yeah. And, and as you know, um, we often only get to do three or four or five questions an hour. So, you know, and we have a limited amount of time recording around six to 12 hours a week. So, you know, if there's three or 400 questions as a backlog, then of course it's going to take some time probably before we get around to it. And that yeah. depends again on our priorities. Like if we feel the question has a much higher priority, it will help more people then that question or a session containing that question would probably be created mm. before a question that we feel was going to help a smaller amount of people will be created. That's right. And mm. the way we structure the sessions where we answer questions is that we try to go for, to present the broadest principles that govern um, and can help people reason yes. uh, and explore the answers to smaller, more specific questions. Correct. So, so we sort of start big yeah, and hone, hone into in. small <laughs> questions. So we start with every subject. We try to start with the overall encompassing principles and guidelines and the different principles of love involved and principles of truth involved before we start honing down and giving a specific answer to a specific question on a specific topic <laughs> you know, yeah. that's involved in that large subject area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's very loving. It helps people get a broad understanding of everything that we reference then in yeah. the small answers. Yeah. So that's the questions we do answer. Yeah, Let's yeah, get back yeah. to the ones that we yeah. don't. Um, so opposite to what you said, questions that show people don't want to love, that um, they have no interest in loving, um, that 
allow no opportunity or possibility to teach the person who's asking the question about love mm. those kind of questions we just don't answer no we, we, won't, we won't even get around to it <laughs> it's just never going to happen because we feel for a number of reasons that like if a person's not open to love before they ask a question then it's highly unlikely they're going to hear an answer that's based on love and if a person's not open to truth uh, with regard to hearing the answer to a question, then what's the point of telling them any truth? Yeah. And if a person's in, 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 unable to be humble during the asking of a question even, then I'm pretty sure they're going to be unable to be humble receiving the answer. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty hard for us to answer questions in that, that fall into those categories. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. So questions that demonstrate a refusal of universal truth yes. or demonstrate a lack of interest in discovering universal truth yes. that allow no opportunity or possibility to teach that universal person or truth. other person about other people about universal truth. They just won't get answered. answered. And the same applies to love. You know, questions that are not about, you know, God's love about loving your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they're just all like we get a lot of metaphysical questions yeah. questions that we have a very low priority to answer yeah. you know sure they're interesting and it's a bit, it's a bit like you know you know why does a tree uh, suck water up from the base to the top you know yeah. and how does it do it you know well it might be a fascinating physical question yeah. Yeah. at the end of the day it's not our primary motivation for answering questions is all about love and truth yeah. about universal love and truth affecting the human soul so so while we can answer the question it doesn't really it's probably going to come a long way down on the list. Yeah. And the same applies to um, questions about love, of course. God's love comes before human love and then, yeah. and so forth. So, yeah. so if there's a questions about God's love that we feel needs to be answered, then we'll probably want to answer those first before we answer questions about human love, for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And so, just in keeping with our theme, theme that you've already what touched we won't in, answer. or what we won't answer, <laughs> yeah. um, it, just like with when the question has demonstrates no opportunity for us to teach um, universal truth, the same applies for personal truth. Of course, if the person is who's asking the question is close to the truth, and their question is posed in a way that is really saying I don't want personal truth and I don't want to learn any personal truth about myself then we're not going to answer the question no. because it's a really we might put the question on a list for others if we feel it's an important question that others might be open to hearing yes but but it's highly unlikely we'd send an email back to the person involved yeah uh, aside yeah. from just saying thank you for your question type yeah of thing. yeah mm. yeah for sure yeah. Okay, um, questions that display a lack of humility, that indicate the impossibility for the questioner to conceive that they might even be wrong. And this comes under the category really of questions that are their statements or people wanting to make a point and doing yeah. it in the guise of a question. We get, we get this a lot from religious people where we they do. just go, I don't see how you can do this and please tell me how this is and please tell me how that is. But really what they're saying is, I don't agree with anything you're saying and these are all the Bible reasons why or these yeah. are all the Cor Quran reasons why I don't believe what you're saying. So we, well, our feeling is, well, if you don't believe what you're saying, that's okay with us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're but not why, going to answer your questions. And it feels very draining to the, to sit down and and answer a question where you know the person really isn't. They've they've stated a question, but they really don't want to hear an answer from you. And, no. and I have done it in the past, and really, it just sort of infuriates a person more that I've actually answered the question that they did ask yeah. because really they were really wanting to make a point with yes. me. Yes, yeah. and, and a lot of people are quite uh, what I'd call is deceitful and manipulative mm -hmm. about that. They, they really want to just make a whole heap of points yeah. rather than listening to answers yeah. that might confront the points th that they're making. And many times the points they're making are totally illogical. Yeah. In fact, I would classify many of them as both unscientific and imaginary yes. <laughs> in the sense that like a lot of people's belief in the Bible is imaginary. You know, yeah. a lot of things that are claimed to have happened didn't happen. A lot of things um, that that they say should happen in the future will never happen. Yeah. And they're just and it's just some meanderings of somebody's mind written down. And many times, not only somebody, but a multitude of people have modified that particular information. And and why would we want to spend all this precious time we have sharing truth? 
confronting error all the time. Mm. Let's present the truth. And, and, and if the error that you're reading in the Bible doesn't agree with it, then obviously we don't agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it doesn't matter how much you quote 25 different verses to us, we're not going to change our mind. No. So yeah. there's little point in answering questions like that. Now, if we have a sincere Christian come along and he says, and he asks a question about what does this verse mean from mm. your perspective? And we feel from that Christian a sincere desire to know the answer or even to consider the possibility of our answer being correct, then of course we'll probably answer the question in either the Christian religion section or the Bible section. And we have done that. We have, we done, have done that for many questions. Yeah. 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 So we're not adverse to answering questions. We're adverse to answering questions of people who don't want to hear the answers. Yes, that's <laughs> giving, right. <laughs> we give, we're adverse to giving answers to people who don't want to receive them. <laughs> yes, and we're also we're also never going to answer the question of someone who is abusive, attacking, sarcastic, violent, ridiculing, condescending, condescending and, all um, and belittling towards ourselves or other people. Why would we? Yeah. We're, we're not teaching them love if we yeah. do so. Yeah. What we need to do is teach people love, and a part of our teaching people love is that we act in a loving manner towards ourselves. Now, if someone's not acting in a loving manner towards us, why would we engage a conversation with them? And why would they even expect us to? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, that's what I don't understand. Why, yeah. why, would, why would anybody email us and expect us to answer a whole heap of attacking abuse? Yes. There's no reason for us to answer it. Yeah. Uh, and engaging it with them would only further exacerbate their and loving behavior. I remember once or twice when I have done it, there was one lady who, who's, who was a Catholic. She says, I'm a Catholic. She said, and you're, you're a pufta, she called me. And, uh, and I forget what else she said, something about me being some kind of manipulative cult leader. And I wrote back to her and saying, firstly, um, you might be a Catholic, but you're not very loving. Yeah. Secondly, <laughs> that you call me a pufter, I'm definitely not one because <laughs> I actually enjoy a heterosexual relationship with my girl and never have been one. Yeah. Not that that being one is bad because the reality is um, if we Google, if we use the right term yes. and, the, and the more loving term of homosexual, yeah. um, one of my best friends, John, yeah. the Apostle John is homosexual, so there's not a problem there. And then I said to her about, you know, the, the issue about me being a cult leader, well, why don't you watch the whole series of cult information that yeah. we've produced, 40, 50, I think 70 videos yeah, or more. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, so I send that off to her. She writes back, I didn't want a reply from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so well, that was a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't reply to them. That's why. And in fact, I feel that if I reply and answer a question to someone who's being really attacking or whatever, I'm, uh, like you said, I'm, I'm sort of through that action saying it's okay that you treat me or other people in that way. And so if I do respond to people like that, the only way I feel that I can ethically respond is by first addressing, addressing the, issues of love. the issues of love about the way they've posed their question or the, the underlying emotion in the question yeah. before I can even look at the question. Yeah. Because that's the major issue yes. from God's perspective yeah. um, is the issue of love right there. Yeah. And how many times have we addressed an issue with love, of love with a, someone who thinks they are loving yeah. and they've come back with a whole heap of abuse and swear words and carry on? And, yeah. and in the end, it's just a waste of our time. Like it, it doesn't accomplish yeah. anything. No. And, and, and honestly, those kind of people. And, and I just want to say something to people who email us not expecting a response. Why email a person when you don't expect a response? Like it's stupidity, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, but a lot of people a lot of feel people entitled it. to just yeah. lay abuse on and then to... And then run away. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can't handle the answers. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is what we're talking about. If you can't handle the answers, why do you expect an answer? Or, or, or why engage? <laughs> or but, why engage yeah. at all? Yeah. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> and and people, go, people nowadays don't seem to be able to leave other people alone. No. Do they? It's like... The whole live and let the, live. Yeah, the whole live and let live thing. No, it's not. It's live and let die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, let's see, how can we crush them? And I just yeah. feel like, you know, a, a lot of people who listen to our presentations and so forth, there are a lot of sincere people, but a lot of the people who listen just for the sake of picking on things, they're not interested in truth. They're not interested in love. They're not interested in anything at all other than picking on somebody. So go and pick on somebody else. <laughs> 
Well, no, I don't <laughs> encourage picking on someone else. Well, I no, encourage you to reassess was, your priority list in life. What I'm saying is they will pick yeah. on somebody sooner or later. We'll pick on yeah. somebody else. We're not going <laughs> to we're not going to engage it with you and go. Yeah. Oh yeah, no worries. Pick on us. That's fine. <laughs> Like, how crazy is that? Yeah. And there's this deep expectation in people that because we're Jesus and Mary that we should let people pick on us all the time. It's the whole turn the other cheek situation. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like we've even had that said to yeah. us by somebody who's picking on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> like, like, really, you're going to sit there and say, you're not sorry for treating us badly and, and we've got to just sit here in, in our own home and keep putting up with it. No, yes. you get going, man. <laughs> like, we're not putting up with this from you. <laughs> and also uh, my feeling about what you said in the first century about turning the other cheek was really about humility. It's about being willing to feel my feelings rather than, rather than put them on to somebody else in retaliation. Them in return, yes. yes. And that's very different. And it was very different to the way in which it's used now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, so. it's about just being humble to your own feelings about attack. But it's certainly not saying, look, make yourself a doormat and encourage and invite people to stomp on you. Exactly. Yeah. That's why in the first century, if I was in, surrounded by people who weren't listening to me at all and who were just attacking me, I didn't say anything at all. Yeah. Because there's no point. There's no point saying anything to a group of people who are not open to love, not open to truth. Nothing you can say is going to please them. Nothing you can say is going to make the situation better. They already have set in their heart what they're deciding to do. Yeah. And nothing you can do or say is going to make it better. So, so you know, we often get emails from people like that mm -hmm. and we don't respond to them. We, we do exactly what I used to do. Just yeah. by email instead of face to face. <laughs> that's that's to all. Face. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So other other questions that we don't answer. Yeah. Uh, questions that are controlling and manipulative, and indicate that rather than having a sincere desire for truth, the questioner is attempting to manipulate or control the situation. We've yeah. pretty much spoken. And also about attempting that. to make statements rather than yes. have a question. Like yes. a lot of people, I, I don't know what where people like what have, like uh, the feeling I have is so if I've got a question and it's sincere I'll ask it yeah. if I haven't got a question and I want to make a statement I'll make a statement yeah. do that's, one or the other that's stop, honest, yeah. stop phrasing all of your statements as questions yeah. like if you truly want to know the answer to a question you will listen to the answer yeah. that's the reality yeah. and if you didn't want to truly know the answer to a question you won't listen to the answer yeah. You should have made a statement under those circumstances yeah. instead of asking a question. <laughs> That's right. Another another reasonably common email that we get, and I was just speaking to Lena before the session started yeah. about some of the things she, because she's um, volunteering yeah, on our account office at account at the moment. <coughs> um, she was talking about um, these emails that we get fairly regularly, which are, look, I want to come and join your... <laughs> Cold, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. So they're ill-informed about our life and the way yeah, things happen. Yeah, what have they listen to? Nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, but then they say, and unless I hear from you, I'm getting on a plane tomorrow and I'll be arriving and I don't have any way to support myself. I'm willing to work for food, but basically trying to manipulate and control us into communicating with them and into supporting them financially. Yes. And so... That doesn't really fly with us either. Well, for a start, it's out of harmony with love that they expect anybody to support them financially. Yeah. It's out of harmony with love that they expect to be able to manipulate a person into accepting their company. It's out of harmony with love to demand that other people support them in any way, like with food or other things. But even you know. to mani try to manipulate someone into responding to their email. Yeah, and if they have enough money to fly to Australia, they certainly have enough money to care for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and by law, they have to have enough money to return, have pay a return flight, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we don't have a, we, we only live by ourselves. We don't have visitors who do that ever, ever. So we are never, ever <laughs> going to accept visitors. No matter what is going on, we're <laughs> never going to accept visitors who say that to us. No. And we're even usually never going to reply to them. Yeah. 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 And what we generally find is they never come either No, because <laughs> yeah. all they want is the engagement. Yeah, that's right. Not the... There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways and, and there's a, 
um, some emails that I printed that maybe we can talk sure, about later. But sure. A lot of ways that people try various techniques to yeah. to uh, elicit a response from it's us. It's pretty off, isn't it? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're fine. It's very it is so manipulative. manipulative. And they yeah. try they try the the sweet uh, sort of um, saccharine stuff. Saccharine <laughs> sucking up kind of your wonderful. Please give me attention. And then when the intention does, and we can yeah. feel that that's not sincere. That that's no. more about an addiction that they're wanting to get met. That's yeah. different to people who are genuinely yeah. uh, appreciative. And then when that doesn't work, invariably within a day or two, we get an angry email saying, look, now I don't believe that you're Jesus because you haven't responded to me and I'm going to start yeah. spreading the word that you're evil unless you respond to me. So spread the word then. <laughs> yeah. well, we don't care. <laughs> like, don't you think it's been yeah. done before you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then within a couple of days, we usually get another sort of tack. And, in the, and, sometimes, and, it lasts... get, and sometimes it goes in a whole cycle. Oh, yes. I apologise for all yeah. the manipulative yeah. things I've sent you. Still trying to manipulate us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and the sad thing is that sometimes we don't see our emails for two days or three days or, or four or a days. Week or and more. the whole cycle has kind of happened before we even realise <laughs> what was going on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. And isn't it funny how people even just expect a reply? Like Well, I think a lot of people spend so much time attached to, to their computer. A computer or, or a mobile phone or some yeah. device these Which days. Which we don't. With you know, half an hour check ins or <laughs> <laughs> and we sort of live very differently to that. Yeah. So I'm very grateful that we do yeah. uh, and we have that. Uh, we would never get anything done if we no, didn't. No. And yeah. that's the other thing is that a lot of people who email all of those kind of things must think we live very blinkered and, sh you know, yeah. can, like... Attached to this kind of... Well, not only that, very sheltered and blinkered lives or something. Like, no, we get out and see people and visit people and we, we, we also create a lot of things... We're not, we're not interested in just sitting at our computer behind the anonymity of the internet, like replying to people with a whole heap of words that they don't understand. Yeah, because their, their own emotional uh, condition State is preventing them, from, them, them so. from really feeling what we're trying to say. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, we're not interested in doing that. Yeah, okay, so other questions we don't answer. <coughs> mm -hmm. Questions that are selfish and self-absorbed. Um, mm. vain or an attempt to demonstrate the questioner's own arrogance or self-importance or yeah. to is that all one thing is it <laughs> it is because uh, there's quite a few things yeah, we could mention isn't there? I'll, I'll say it all and then we yeah, can talk about yeah, it sure. uh, or to take up the time of others for no purpose other than to make the questioner feel important or get attention yeah attention seeking definitely not on for us yeah if you're attention seeking well we're not going to give you the attention, so yeah. you should, probably you should try and get it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. And what were the other things? I forget them already. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Selfish and self-absorbed. Now, that's yeah. one that we see... Quite frequently. And, and particularly with people who have a sickness or an illness or a disease or a life-threatening condition of some kind. Or a financial crisis. Or a financial crisis, yeah. 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 And, and often um, what I notice with those kind of questions, when that person is coming from... Um, this selfish kind of self-absorbed place is that they really want information. They don't want to understand those broader principles we spoke about earlier. Well, they're that not would even help interested in seeking truth. Deal with the causes and get out of this long-term. A lot of them haven't even bothered with any of the truth. No, they, they just just now. They just want go. Here's an opportunity for somebody to listen to me, or here's an opportunity for somebody to give me some money, or here's an opportunity for someone to tell me what's wrong with my life, or yeah. you know. And, and honestly, we're not. You're not sincere, people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you do that, you're not sincere. Yeah. Why would we answer you? We can't yeah. answer you yeah. if you're not sincere. Yeah. So these are not sincere requests. These are, these are just requests driven by addictive emotions that you're unwilling to address. And we've got a whole series of things that we've pr produced about addictive emotions. Go and have yeah. a look at that. Yes. <laughs> because honestly, until you get out of that state, there's a high likelihood we're not going to interact with you. And, and we'd be surprised why anybody else would want to, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. If you think about a lot of the emails we get, you'd be surprised if anybody in the world would want to interact with some of those people yes. while yeah. they have that level of demand and addiction yeah. and control and manipulation yeah. and everything else going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the other way I see that happening is for people who who have perhaps been coming to seminars or listening to YouTube for a number of years. They've made very little personal change, though. They might be fascinated by God's truth external to themselves. They make 
no real personal change or no sincere attempts to challenge their addictions in their life and then suddenly some some attraction comes to a head and it's not sincerity that's motivating their question anymore it's a sense of fear and desperation and they just want a quick fix basically yeah and they want you or me to mm. tell them exactly what they need to do to get out of this crisis yes but really the their will-based desire is i still want to hold on to all my other addictions though of course i just want to deal with the Why one that's causing give up any addictions <laughs> <laughs> just want to get rid of the one thing that's causing this just this very extreme situation yeah and we're less attracted to those kind of questions well, aren't we? again it's not sincere there's not a sincere desire for god there and there's not a sincere desire to love all the time. Yeah. There's not. A, it's only when things get unloving for them yeah. that they're interested in change. That's very selfish. Yeah. And, and honestly, yeah, they, they they don't attract us at all. Yeah. Like, it's highly unlikely we'll answer them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they raise interesting points, which you might you know put into an FAQ session or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But rarely will those kind of people receive a personal response from us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions that come from people in spirit dimensions, but which the people on earth that those spirits are using as the intermediary have no interest in having answered. So that's, <laughs> yes. for example, me as the medium, I'm not interested in... Well, a lot of times they're not mediums. Yes, that's they? true. A, that's lot true. Of them, a lot of times yeah. they're mediums in a technical sense of the word, yeah. but they're not actually mediums doing a job. What they are is people who are totally possessed yes. <laughs> by spirits, basically. Yes. Yes. And, and the spirit is just telling them what to say. So they write a whole heap of pages out. Usually it's all in the same line. No punctuation. No punctuation, no anything. No capitals. No yep. capitals or anything. Yep. It's yep. all yep. just like, gunk. <laughs> They've had this splurge out from yes. a spirit and are demanding that we give them an answer, this or that, this or that. And we know that the person involved has no interest in the subject whatsoever. The person who actually did the typing yeah, is not really a party to the question. And they're just being totally spirit possessed yeah. to to interact with us in order to demand our time and waste it yeah and the reality is yeah have no yeah. there's a, there's a um, lot of reasons why we have no desire to respond yeah um, to that kind of a questioning yeah. and it's a similar principle isn't it that we talked about earlier about addressing the issue of love and because sometimes this happens in you, seminars and you sometimes can't even like address the a, issue with love with them well what i was going to say is the <laughs> issue that we need to address up front is look you're quite spirit overcloaked yeah you know that's but, but they the don't even want to hear that yeah so like what can you say to them yeah. like we we look at a lot of these emails and we go another person like this yeah, yeah. and particularly we find a lot of young men and young yes. women now yeah. getting into this condition where yeah. they are being overcloaked they're giving up their will giving up of, their will yeah and and we read the the whole thing and we go now all it is is this spirit saying a whole heap of mumbo jumbo through you both you and the spirit have done no research. You have mm. no desire for truth. You have no desire for love. You d you just want an interaction, which and is attention, a, an even, attention. Isn't it? Yeah. And and honestly, yeah, we haven't got the time to answer those particular questions because we've got a lot of important subject matter to to share, and not enough time to do it already. Yeah. 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 So. Well, let's look at the the, the kind of flip of that. side of that, yeah. yeah, which is questions that come from people on earth, yeah. but which the spirits with those people will not allow the, the person, person on, on earth, earth to, to hear the answer to. And yeah. we see that a lot. Oh, that's like like we often get new age people in this in this yeah. mode where they send us a whole heap of questions and and we know that the spirit with them doesn't want to hear the answer to any of the questions and it reminds me of this lady like many years ago who emailed me about i that you know i couldn't be jesus because she was channeling jesus and, rah, 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 and she went through all this stuff anyway i told her the spirits that she was actually channeling and she confirmed they she said is that true to them and they said yes <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> they'd been lying about their identity for basically. years to her yeah. Yeah. and and the, she asked her what them why and they said they said because you know because you let us <laughs> yeah. basically yeah. and you wanted to yeah. we wanted to have an interaction with you and you'd only let us when if it, we claimed we were jesus so we did yeah and she didn't have any idea they, who they were or anything. But after a while, we had a dialogue that went on for a few months. But after a while, I could feel that, yeah, these spirits do not want her to change whatever she does. And she actually doesn't want to change whatever she does either. And all of a sudden, the just dialogue just stopped and we never heard from her again. 
And, and I think of all that material going back and forth, would have been great in the public domain, but, yeah. but because a lot of people may have learnt some things mm. from it, but in the end it didn't benefit her or the spirits with her. And so basically you're saying, though, is when a person is in codependent sort addiction. of addiction with a, a spirit or a group of spirits, yep. and the spirits are quite invested in the person in earth <coughs> not receiving truth yes. about a certain subject or a number of subjects, yes. then even if you offer the truth to that person, unless they want to give up the codependence with the spirits, it's never going to go anywhere. Never going to go anywhere. And you can, I, I experienced that as well. You, you pretty rapidly feel when that person doesn't want to give up the spirit yeah. uh, relationship that they have. And yeah. you know that it doesn't matter how hard or which way or, you know, how you try to present the truth of the personal situation for the person on earth, unless they want to give up that spirit interaction, it's just going to go nowhere and it's a waste of your energy. It is. And we've had a number of people coming to seminars asking questions who fall into that category, yes. haven't we, over many yes. years. Yeah. Yeah. And it is just, you just, what do you do? You can't, you can't continue feeding the addiction to just ask a whole heap of questions with no result. Yeah. And, and a lot of the questions are not even interesting to us because they mm. don't fit our priorities. Yeah. So they're, they're not even like worth spending time on. There's more important things, I should say, that are worth spending our time on. But also yeah. I find with those kind of people too, the spirits with them only want them to have certain things answered mm -hmm. and then they get to a point where the spirit's challenged mm -hmm. and then they don't want to have the other things answered. Yeah. All right. So, And it gets down to, in fact, the person on earth and the spirit both have issues with being challenged. Mm. They want their belief systems to not be challenged mm -hmm. and, and they only want validation a lot of times. They, only, they want you to agree with them. You know, yeah. And we get a lot of emails where people say, I agree with this, you know how you believe this? And we go, no, we don't. <laughs> we don't believe that. Yeah, what do you yeah. think? Why do you think we believe that for? Yeah. You, know, you believe this and you believe that and I agree with all that. And, and what do we say to these people? Where have they heard that we believe mm. those things when what we've taught is completely the opposite of what they're saying? Yeah. They obviously haven't heard it from us. Yeah. They're just presuming a whole heap of things. What can we do? Yeah. Again, spirit motivated questions like yes. that, that are just like trying to engage us in some way without there being any sincere interaction. Yeah. Little time for that. Yeah. And I was just smiling as you were speaking about that, about, you know, people who want. And I even recognize this in myself when I first met you. you. You know, when a person really asks a sincere question, they have an open heart to whatever the answer is going to be. And that, that it's a sincere, uh, open, what is the answer to this question? That's a pure question, isn't it? Um, but often we can ask questions because we want validation for a point of view that we're already holding. And we think that the person who's going to answer the question is going to agree with us and we're going to get a little buzz from that, that we knew the answer to the question. Yeah. And very often um, that or, gets... Or you get the, the other thing where we have heard frequently in seminars where the person asks the same question every seminar. And want a different answer. And they want a different... All they want is a different answer. Which is, they want the answer that they already think the answer is. So why don't they just say what they think the yes. answer is and get on, get on with it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just say, no, I'm sorry, I disagree. Yeah. And let's finish it yeah. there. Yeah. Instead of just asking the same question yeah. again and again yeah. and again and again and again, hoping for me to say something different to them. Yeah. Why do they even want me to say something different to them? I don't understand that either. If I disagreed with you, I wouldn't want you to keep, I wouldn't keep saying, are you, you really? Uh, do you really want that? Do, you know, I wouldn't keep asking you the same question. I'm like, okay, fair enough. You disagree with me. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess there are a lot of emo emotional injuries that cause us to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Huge amounts of emotional injuries of wanting other people to agree with you, wanting approval from other people before you will accept a belief, yeah. wanting, wanting, you, holding steadfastly to a belief that you believe is true without verbalising that you believe it's true, not when, when willing to look stupid to other people, yeah. all sorts of reasons yeah. why a so person many. does that. But yeah. it's all addiction. It is. <laughs> which is why so, we're attracted to answer it. Yeah, so we're not attracted to answering questions of people who are really just seeking validation from point, <coughs> for a point of view that they already hold yeah. or, or who want us to supply an answer that's going to make them feel comfortable rather than to supply a truthful answer. Exactly. Also, we're not very attracted to answer, answering questions for people... Um, 
you know, say I, say a person asks a question, you give them an answer, and then without even taking pause to to really listen and process the answer to that question, they're on to the next. Yeah. D- the answer rather they're on to the next question yeah. and to me that that's a total lack of respect for the, any time we spent answering the previous question and they didn't really listen to the first answer so why would we why answer would the we second, give a second question one? yeah no point yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and we nowadays generally say that to them <laughs> <laughs> No point that's in right. the second one. You haven't thought about the first one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that's the you can't really you can't receive more truth from God unless you're willing to look at what God's yeah. attractions and God's messengers and God's all you know whatever God's trying to teach us right now. We can't learn the next thing because God no. knows the exact best thing for us to learn right now. And yeah. so it's a similar principle. Like if you're, if you're drawn to ask a question and then you reject that answer and want to ask a different question, you're kind of rejecting the whole process of learning, aren't you? Not only that, you're really rejecting the time and effort yeah. of the individual giving you the answers as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a gross lack of respect, actually, yeah. for yeah. the time of the person who's giving you their time for free. Yeah. Like... And yeah, you know, honestly, when people demonstrate that kind of level of disrespect, there's little point in engaging them further. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next lot is uh, people, and we've sort of touched on this. People from, sorry, questions from people who only want their addictions met, who are demanding, unkind, have expectations, hmm. and the question indicates that they really want to just keep meeting their addictions. Yeah. And we've had many of that. I think I've put even a few interactions of those on the internet in a chain of events too, so people can see the chain of events. Usually it starts off with their, you know, asking some sincere questions and then it gets into demanding that we answer them in the time frame they've given us to answer them. Yeah. As soon as they get into that place, it's like, what? Like, we're giving you our time for free and now you're demanding time from us? What? Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and, and usually we say that's an unloving thing. And, of course, when we say that's an unloving thing, the, any person who's in a demand usually gets really angry then. Yeah. You know, so then yeah. they start, you know, getting vicious. And then we go, now, now not only are you unloving, but you're also vicious. Like, yeah. So now you've got two problems. Like. Yeah. Uh, and, and why would we want to have any interaction with you after that, you know? Yeah. And then I think one lady even tried to take down my responses from the internet. She, uh, she actually went through a whole series of processes to remove my responses, <laughs> which I had to remove, oh Lord. So it's just like, yeah, that's a high level of control and terrible, terrible behaviour. Yeah. And honestly, people like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad to see the back end of your time. <laughs> well, we've learnt, haven't we, over the years yeah. that it's just it doesn't help us, it doesn't help anyone else, doesn't no. help that person. It just it's just no. a huge waste of time. It's a waste time. of time. Yeah. And these kind of people are not sincere. A sincere truth seeker listens to responses they're given yeah. and they don't demand more time from a person who's giving them their time for free. Yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if they were paying for our time. Yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if we were, you know, charging $5,000 a week for a seminar or something, which we're not doing. No. You know, then you might feel justified in demanding a person's time from them. But boy, it's like, how, how unjust is it to demand the time of a person who's already gifted you their time? Yeah. And gifted you everything you've already heard yeah. from them. Yeah. That's very unloving behaviour. And... To be honest, we find that there's a lot of people out there who have unloving behaviour towards their teachers, Yeah, I've, which is I've, a very interesting yeah, problem, really. Because yeah. the teacher, whoever they are, whether at school or university or whatever, they're, they're, they're giving, giving you of themselves. They're yeah. sharing information with you that is going to hopefully and, and probably assist your life. How can you demand things of them, even if you're paying them even? Mm. Like... And why do you think you know better than them before you start? Mm-hmm. Uh, many people think that. Yeah. Like many people who have listened to us for four or five years now think they know better what divine teachings are, truth teachings are than we do who began them. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> okay. that's right. Yeah. Or you could say repeated them from God anyway. Yeah. But you yes. know, either way, why would you think you know something better than yeah. the person who's taught it to you for years and years and years? Yeah. It's just arrogance. Yeah. And we're not yeah. that attracted to people who are arrogant. No. 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 Okay. Um, 
This is a good one. Yep. Questions that are not the real question that people need to ask, but yeah. rather are questions that people are asking to maintain their own facade. Yes. Might, a lot of people have this concept that if I make out I'm a good person, then everyone around me, including me, will also believe that I'm a good person. <laughs> now, to be honest with you, if a person can feel your true emotional condition, they are not going to believe you're a good person when you're not being one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and the reality is we can feel, and particularly myself, can feel accurately the emotional condition of most people. So, so you know, the re reality is if you're acting like you're good when you're not very nice, I'm still going to treat you like you're not very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And initially that will be trying to help you through your facade and if you get angry with me, then of course there won't be any further interactions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's how you're going to get treated, whether whether you're trying to make out you're someone nice or not. Yeah. Yeah. You're I going was... to be treated consistently based on the emotion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I was grinning about that because I, I, you know, I've done that a lot, especially when we first met. You know, ask questions in facade and wanted to maintain a big facade. That and was... we'd go into a great big palaver about asking questions, and I'd say to Honestly, darling, this is not what. What, it's not what, what I'm are you feeling? feeling? Yes. And yeah. you'd say, "Oh, yeah, what I'm feeling is <laughs> really I'm angry, or I feel everything's hopeless." So yeah. Go and feel that. Yeah. Stop asking me about trying to get some hope. Go and feel the hopelessness you feel. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'd ask questions about, and that really their motivations were trying to feel more hopeful. Yeah. Or trying to get um, well, trying agreement. Well, to avoid the feeling of hopelessness, really. Well, it was one of the two. Avoid no, the feeling. No, but you only of... want to feel more hopeful because you're avoiding the feeling of hopelessness. That's what I mean. To mm. avoid the feeling of hopelessness or to get validation for my sense of cynicism. Yeah. You know, <laughs> both things yeah. were avoidance of emotion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, sometimes I see, and I see this in other people now because I know, because yeah. I've done it. Yeah. Um, to justify anger with other people, yes. to to get validation for my righteousness, and yes. and all of these kind of questions are facade based questions, yeah. and they do not help anyone, anyone. to answer them no. because they're really just helping the person, the questioner, which used to be me, yeah. to foster and maintain their own facade to themselves and to and other to people. people. Yeah. And the best service we can do is, in that case is to help the person break through the facade. Of course, and tell them that the only reason why they asked that question was because they have a whole heap of other things going on. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, and the question is really almost moot. It's, it's, it's almost done, you know. It's just a fabrication of the facade, isn't it? Really? It's a fabrication of a facade and an attempt to avoid the real question. Yeah. In many cases. Yeah. And yeah, we're getting more and more, the more sensitive we're getting emotionally, the less inclined we are to answer those kind of questions. Yeah. Before we would have taken them at face value. Definitely. Nowadays we don't take them at face value because we can feel the emotion behind them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we've touched on this one in other areas of this series, mm -hmm. but questions that only benefit one person and will be of little benefit to others. Yes. Like, it might be a good question, yeah. but if it if it's very uh, much surrounding your own personal life and your own personal circumstances, your own personal situation, with no real relative relationship to anything else, yeah, it's, you know, like while it might be interesting to mm. converse with you, we have high priorities, and yeah. those high priorities demand our attention more than your question demands our attention. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, you know, something that we've started doing since the assistance groups last year is recorded personal truth sessions with people. Mm -hmm. And that is answering sometimes quite personal specific questions, mm -hmm. but always you're very conscious of the um, bigger picture giving the bigger picture yep. and the reason that it's recorded. And I know a lot of people feel mm -hmm. a lot of benefit from watching those sessions because there mm -hmm. are so many things that do apply to other people. Well, we just had a session today about uh, with, uh, with Andrew, with the yep. guy who has cancer of the lungs. Yep. And that session has the potential to benefit many, so many, many people, people with cancer. Yep. But and even those who, who don't yet have cancer or who have specific issues with spirits or mm. uh, angry women or their mothers. There was so much in that session that yeah. I was sitting there reflecting on for mm. myself even and, yes. and everyone who was watching. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we often will engage those kind of people, particularly when they're willing, like Andrew was, to, to have the recording done. Yeah. Uh, because it 
helps other people. If, if it was just Andrew coming to us when, and he didn't want to, you know, have the question in front of a camera and he didn't want to hear the answers in front of a camera, then, then all it does is benefit Andrew alone. Yeah. And under those circumstances, maybe a few spirits with him perhaps, but um, under those circumstances, we're less inclined to engage because we want to have the information benefit everybody and we'd rather say it once and benefit everybody than say it five times with five different individuals. Yes. And yeah. as I mentioned in our session yesterday, even the benefit to Andrew would be limited to the, if it wasn't recorded in any way, it yeah. would be limited to the point where he became overwhelmed and didn't want to feel that. Then or he, where he became resistive and didn't want to do anything about it. Didn't want to deal with that. Mm. Whereas if it's recorded, it can help him again and, and again, again and again. Yeah. Um, and so... And the, it can even help him if he passes. Yes. Like it can, and it can help a large number of other people, yeah. whether they hear or pass as well. Yeah. It can help a whole heap of spirits who still feel they have cancer while they're in the spirit world. It can help large so amounts of people, people when we do that. Yeah. So we're very focused on helping a larger group of people rather than the individual. Yeah. And we feel that if we do that, there's, there's not a single individual issue that doesn't help large groups of people generally. Yes. So, so we we, yes. if we do that, it's a great use of our time. Yeah. Mm. So that's why if it is a specific <coughs> question for, relating to a specific person, we try and record it so that other people and have it's similar by, issues. But if we go even further and it's by email, we probably won't answer it. No. Because, we, because it only benefits them and, and nobody else benefits from that's it. That's right. It, we might put it on an FAQ session and answer it because yep. then it might benefit a few yep. other people. And um, for emails where I've done that in the past to help just a specific person, I've now began, begun to put them on our website or on my blog or something to, that it now benefits a b broader range of people. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if we don't do that, then basically it has been, unless we, it's an interaction we really would like to have with the person because we're, you know, because of, uh, you know, we want to have a relationship with them, mm -hmm. there's really of no benefit to having the interaction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to us personally, yeah. or to the people who, who themselves, because most of the time the people themselves don't hear a lot of what we yeah. say. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's like it's like even encouraging people to record what we say, because what we've found in the past is that is that many people who come and ask a question and they don't record or write down anything we've said, they go away thinking we've said something entirely different to what mm -hmm. we've actually said. Mm -hmm. We've had people actually forget the entire two-hour conversation we had with them and they've never written anything and they haven't had it recorded. Yeah. And yet we've wasted two hours of our life yeah. and we say, remember that conversation? And they say, what conversation? And we go, oh, yeah, that's right. You were overcoped by a spirit the whole time, <laughs> yeah. weren't you? You weren't hearing a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and what's yeah. the point of having yes. that kind of a conversation with a person? Yeah. So we... And we find that there are a lot of people who fall in that category where they come to us asking a question, what they believe is, in, is sincere. Mm -hmm. They get some of our time and they don't listen to a single thing we've said. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and we go, well, that was pointless. Yeah. Like on, at least if we recorded it and they didn't listen to everything anyway, we said, other at least other people who might listen to it might listen to it yes. <laughs> you know, and yeah. actually yeah. do something about what's being said. At least that comes from, as a result. But when it's just no recording at all, there's no result whatsoever. We yeah. spend hours of our time, no result. Yeah. Like, we're not into that. No. We're into, like, we'd rather spend some time by ourselves than have to get some results. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and now that I've stopped asking questions in my facade, that's much more yeah, yeah, even <laughs> enjoyable. That's more yeah. than enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's yeah. just get through these sure, last ones. Sure. Again, we've covered a lot of this, but yeah. questions that are rhetorical and generally just use the rhetoric of people who wish to lecture us, correct us, yes. um, use third party material to attack us, or Including just. Including Bible and Koran and those kind uh, of things, and sacred holy books. Yep. Um, or they just want to take up our time. Yeah. Yeah. Seems so to be a popular pastime. People who are bored want to take up other people's time for some reason. They do. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. that one. And it's not a good use of our time to engage no, with those people. No, none of those things. And particularly the people who just send us a whole heap of rhetoric, you know, like, yeah. why do they think anybody's going to read it even? I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. There's no emotional engagement. There's no emotional care. For us, yeah. all the, you know, any person who's listening, it's like it's like someone preaching at you. You know, yeah. if I wanted to have somebody preaching at me, I'd go along to a church or something where somebody yells and screams at me for an hour yeah. about the Bible and this and Bible that. You know, I, I, you know, 
I've never done that, but if I wanted to have somebody preaching to me, that's probably what I'd do. Yeah. I don't need it in my inbox. No. <laughs> So, or at your seminar. So, so when we start seeing the first few lines of those things, they just get deleted. Deleted, yeah. Yep. Delete button for those. Yep. And that same thing goes for people who, you know, we get people who write to us and demand answers to their questions because... Yeah, they get deleted. That, you know, <laughs> and this is what this faith says about it and what are you going to say about what I'm saying to you? And I'm you giving and you... Some of them even do things like, I'm giving you 24 hours to respond. Literally, yes. they say that. I'm giving you 24 hours to respond. I Otherwise, expect. I'm going to post yep. that you never responded and you don't care about yep. people and you... Yep. And all this crap, like, honestly, yeah. it's like... We're not sitting down in front of the computer 24 by 7 hoping that you email yeah. us so, so we that we can respond and, write a response and to your mitigate yeah. all of your unreasonable and unloving demands and, yeah. and, and excessive, what I feel is it, it excessive and very negative uh, unloving behaviour. Like. Yes, and a lot of the time what happens with these kind of emails that come to office is that you know the volunteers there do have the library of our, of the videos that we've and many times the questions that these people have asked are answered in short clips so it takes 10 Five or 15 minutes, minutes of their even. time to watch yeah but often when the person is coming from that emotional space that we just spoke about the people answering will send, look, the, your questions they, are answered in these following videos. They take the time videos. to get all the links and put them all there for them and everything. Yep. And the person responds angrily and says, I wanted a written response from Jesus to my question. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I look at that and, and I go, you are never getting a written <laughs> response from me because of how you treated my lovely volunteer. Yeah. Because they took the time to give you a very specific answer. You took the time, firstly, to record something that answered their question very clearly and in depth. So if they had a sincere desire, they would watch the video. But they didn't want to watch the video because they wanted special attention from you. And they disrespected the time Not of only the that, people. a lot of times these people just want to have an opportunity for enter an engagement where they finish up abusing me yeah, anyway. That's, that's, that's really true. what they want. Yeah. And yeah. so... What we do is test out most people's, we, we test a lot of people's sincerity by giving them responses that are, are true where we've spent time to deliver, but, but they're general in nature yeah. so that they have to look at that for themselves. Yeah. And if they respond badly to that, then they're not going to get a further response. Yeah. And if you if you um, contrast that with the sincere person, yeah, completely sincere different. people are it is just a completely different feeling and they oh, feel so, so much different. gratitude that someone has taken the time it's, to it's answer. Not that. They're it, seeking the answers Even if they don't express already... their gratitude, you can feel from them that they do have a sincere desire for truth. They do have a sincere desire to grow in love. They are being humble in that yeah. they realise that they might not know the answer, yeah. even when they think they do. Yeah. And, and when you send a response to them, they're appreciative, if not of anything else, at least of the time you've given them. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. And 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 they might not even agree with the answer. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. But they're appreciative of the time that you spent responding. Yeah. Most of the people we've been talking about don't, don't fall into that category. Don't fall into that category. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions we don't answer. Questions that are not specific or are anonymous. Yes. Self-explanatory. I think so. I think the specific thing is we have a, a person that says. They write a whole heap of stuff about their life and then say, I don't really know what question is that I want to ask. Yeah. And we go, well, if you don't know the question you want to ask, while I might know it, me answering it is not probably going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know yeah. what you want to ask first. But I like to encourage people because often within their whole... Um, splurb. Splurb or life, life story. story <laughs> often... There's a lot. There's a lot that they're not even aware of. of. Course. They haven't paused long enough with their own emotions to feel. Look, what is really yeah. troubling me? What is yeah. really what I want questions to? And sometimes even the answer to their questions in the next paragraph, even. But they haven't just sat with the process long enough no. to feel through it. Yeah. And so I like to 
encourage people to do that, but also because of the volunteers. If volunteers have to sit down, read through all of this, they have to do the thinking, what is this really troubling this person? What do they really want to ask? How can I phrase that then for a frequently asked question or who do I refer it to? And that takes a lot of their time where, you know, I like to encourage people to take that time. It's more responsible and loving for the person who's asking the question to actually sit with it and yeah. formulate a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, uh, like I feel there's something I want to talk, to talk there's something coming up there or I want to talk to you about later. But yeah, um, but yeah I feel that um, a lot of people, I don't know, have this sort of, they, sp- they splurge out their life and a life story without actually reading what they just, Splurted out. Yes. And if they reread it over and over again, they'd learn a lot, but they don't. They don't take mm. the time even to go over the, what they're sending to us. Mm. And and like if if it was me doing that, I, I would I would reread it over and reread it over, and and I'd ask myself, is this what I'm really feeling before I hit the mm. send button? Mm. I don't know. It seems with emails, with, with writing a letter. You have to really think about what you're going to say mm-hmm. because it hurts eventually your hand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to write the letter, a you know, large yeah. letter. But also that you've got time because you're writing usually slower. Yeah. You've got time to reflect upon what you're actually writing and what are you meaning and how do you feel. When the emails are written, we often see people don't do that. Yeah. It's just like blah, 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 and send. And, and there's no thought gone in or emotional connection with what they're sending to us many times. Mm. And then they wonder why we don't respond. It's because there is no emotional connection. There's that, that, it's just splurge, send, splurge, send. It's not, how do I really feel? What am I really wanting? What do I really need here? What help, kind of help do I need because of what are the issues that I feel I'm facing? Yes. There's no consideration gone into that. And yeah, that's what I was feeling about, yeah. 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 And I feel that's what that's what needs to change if people want to have a response from us anyway. <laughs> that's what needs to change. <laughs> if they don't want a response, well, that's fine. <laughs> Our inbox gets littered with people who are sending in live stories, but we don't respond to because they literally haven't given much thought to what they're writing even, yeah. or what they want to know. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, the last few. Um, Arguments that are couched as a question. Yeah, well, I think that this. with two, and, and we, honestly, they, they just they're frustrating <laughs> to deal with, aren't they? It's, like, it's just they're asking a question, and we go, but you don't think that. <laughs> you don't think that. <laughs> Do you feel this? It's pretty obvious what you feel. Why are you, why are you just saying, I feel you're a monger, I feel yeah. you this, I feel you that. You know, quite often that's what it's about. I feel you're a monger, I feel you rip-off merchant, I feel you this, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. you that, I feel you this. Well, fair enough, and then delete. Yeah. Um, you can have all your feelings. That's fine by us. I'm not going to respond to those statements in a question yeah. because I can feel that it, I can feel your feelings. So I can feel that all you're doing is trying to make statements to me, questions to me that yeah. I respond to, trying to get some agreement to you, like as if I'm going to agree that I'm a cult leader. I'm not a cult leader. Yeah. I only will agree to things that are true. Yeah. So you call me narcissistic 2,500 times. I'm not narcissistic, and I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can call me self-absorbed all you want. I'm not self-absorbed. My whole life spent not, you know, is spent helping other people. Yeah, I'm not yeah, self-absorbed. Yeah. And I've done it for thousands of years, many, much longer than many have. Yeah. And, and so I'm not self-absorbed. You call me self-absorbed. You can believe all you want. I'm not going to respond to it. And I'm not going to respond to it into a question that goes, Do, don't you think you're self-absorbed? Yes. Of course I don't think I'm self-absorbed. And... Um, and I know I'm not, yeah. so I'm not going to respond to the question. <laughs> okay, a disagreement that is couched as a question. We'd much prefer just to, for people to say they disagree. Yeah, just disagree. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. We'd much rather that. Yeah, and presentation of lies couched as questions. Yeah, we'd much rather the lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple. We, we find that a lot when people ask questions about relationships. It's really a minefield there. People set you up so much there because they want the answer that they're right and their partner's wrong yeah and they don't they don't give both sides of the story we can feel both sides of the story and it's not being given and and we just go honestly 
if you think we're going to respond to you when you're just telling your one-sided story to us, like aside from saying to you, you're telling us a one-sided story which mostly is based upon lies you want to tell yourself or deceive yourself about so that you can take actions you want and you want our agreement to take those actions, we're never going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. We get so many people emailing us wanting agreement for leaving their partner or whatever. Why would we agree with you doing that? Mm. And bearing in mind that we haven't even heard the whole story. Or we don't know these people. And also don't, you know, aside from feeling them, we don't know the person. We've never met them before. And we're not hearing the story of their partner. Like, why would we recommend leaving, not leaving, whatever? Yeah. All we can do is give generalities, which we've already given in our partner relationship series of FAQs. Yeah. That's all we can do. Yeah. Um, we can't help them specifically because they're lying to us yeah. <laughs> and lying to themselves most of the time. Absolutely. And looking for an excuse to just run away from yeah. a problem that they could easily resolve in many cases. Yeah, and I, that saddens me sometimes where um, even a couple might have had a filmed personal truth session with you where feedback is given and then that feedback is selectively used in an abusive way, really. Yes, terrible. It used I, I, I to be dislike abusive. That. It's, uh, like one party starts attacking the other party because AJ said this to you. They start using us as an authority to abuse the other person. Now, I don't use any time, any, there's no excuse for abusing another person. And it's never endorsed by you. No. And the use of truth is never used by you in a way to humiliate, attack or abuse another person. No. And, and it's never given. It's very disturbing. It's very disturbing. I find it very disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it. And it also causes us to not trust that person. Well, it causes us to say, well, we're not going to answer any more questions. Because from person, yeah. it's from you, because it's clear you're just going to use them to... To abuse your partner. To abuse someone else. Yeah, and, very sad. Yeah. Happens yeah. frequently. Yeah. yeah. And blame, there's a, like a huge... Whenever someone uses the, the personal truth that... Yeah, I've had death threats from male partners of female attendees at seminars because that female attendee has gone home and implied that I said something about the male partner that I've never said yeah. and implied to that male partner that, you know, that the, he's the problem. Yeah. And the reason why he's the problem is because AJ said this and AJ said that, none of which I agree with. Yeah. And then the male partner sends me death threats. Yeah. Like, and it's all caused by that woman. Yes. Sending, you know, manipulative, Using, being, manipulative. being manipulative. Yeah. 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 Which is obviously her primary problem in the relationship and probably the reason why the relationship isn't doing that yes. well in the first place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good discussion of the, que- the types of questions yeah. that we don't answer. Yeah. yeah. So in amongst that, obviously, you know, you can see, you can see a general pattern emerging. There's this yeah. general pattern is if we feel think people are sincere, they have a sincere desire to know truth, that doesn't, they don't have to agree with us. They don't have to, you know, but they do have to have a desire for love and truth. They do have to have a desire to be humble. They do have to treat us well mm-hmm. and they do have to treat other people well before we're going to respond to them. So, so you know, it, it's just basic courtesy. Most yes. of what we're saying yes. is really just basic courtesy. Of course, we are a lot more sensitive emotionally than the average people. So therefore, we can tell emotionally when someone's being discourteous, when they've got a smile on their face, Mm -hmm. but there's a whole heap of emotion coming from them that is opposite the smile on their face. And we will address that. But other than that, we're basically asking for basic courtesy in all interactions with every person, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we, that's how we live our life. And that's how what we teach and it's also what we expect anybody who emails anything into us to be yeah 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 Yeah. very simple great okay what questions or interactions just don't interest us (laughs) yeah so this is different than the previous question that we answered in this session which was about the questions that we definitely won't respond to yeah this is just questions that what I don't know. It's not we really... don't feel drawn to respond yes. to. Yep. It's not because of any behaviour on the part of the person or any you know specific uh, uh, unloving thing that they're engaging or the question being unloving or demanding or attacking or any of these other things, but rather just a feeling that, oh, does that topic interest me? Not really. <laughs> so I don't yeah. really want to answer it right now. And a lot of that 
is kind of governed by the priority list that we talked about in session two, isn't it? Of course. That's why it doesn't interest us because it's just not really in our priorities or it's not really in our... Yeah, there's a lot of subjects that we find, um, I suppose you could say we find pretty much everything fascinating. Yes. But we we do feel that there's some things that are much higher priority to talk about than other things. Yeah. And these things, I suppose you could say, are what we feel pretty low on our priority list to talk about. Although we do occasionally talk about them, yep. they are pretty low on our priority list yeah. for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And yeah. perhaps we just need to go through some of the examples and, and, and people will get the idea of what's low on our priority list <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. as to why we're not responding to those kind of things. Okay, so... This one's a good one for me too. Questions or interactions where people are fascinated with the metaphysical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they have no direct relationship to the person wanting to understand God, um, Love, themselves, truth, others, be humble. their environment. <laughs> and in fact, a things. lot of times they're driven by a desire for arrogance. You know, mm-hmm. They want to sort of feel like they know something that nobody else knows, some kind of wonderful thing about the universe that they know that nobody else knows. And, and honestly, like millions of people know it. No, yeah. Every single person in the spirit world often knows it. There's yeah. billions of people in that category. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, oftentimes this person on earth is saying this wonderful thing that they think is wonderful and we go, it's not wonderful, it's just normal. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't yeah. feel the need to respond to it. We might agree with them, but we yeah. don't feel the need to respond and have a dialogue about something we already know and obviously they, are, they now know. And it doesn't seem much point to it. No. Yeah. I often see that people have like a fascination with things that involve spirit interaction or the spirit body sensations. And this is almost bigger mm. to them than God, than, than ethics, so. than love, than truth, than anything. It's just sort of this sort of um, something that's made into some grandiose, m- mystical, wonderful Thing. Well, that, that's why mo- the most often watched videos that we produce are mediumship sessions. Yeah. Like, it's because people people are not interested in connecting to God most of the time. They just have this fascination. And a lot of times it's not even a belief. Mm. They sort of have just this fascination. What's going on there? It's sort of like, <laughs> there's this whole conversation and that person thinks that they're talking to the spirit world and maybe they are. And I don't believe they are, but maybe they are. And isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you know, like, it's not really even knowledge Mm. it's just a fascination Mm. of something that potentially is imaginary or magical yeah and we don't see spirit interaction as magical or imaginary no it's just a fact of life yeah um so we don't see uh, like i feel a conversation that i had with a spirit about a certain topic is no different than a conversation i've had with you or or somebody else with a certain topic and and like what, why would there, why would we feel there's anything special or unique about the interaction with the spirit? Mm-hmm. So anything metaphysical as well, generally just it, it's the, it's to do with things that people learn on the fascination of the universe that we live in. And most of the things in God's universe, of course, are fascinating. Mm-hmm. But in the end, there are more important things and there are less important things. Yeah. Yeah. And the more important things are love based yeah. and the less important things have little to do with love or have very minor factors of love involved in them. Mm. Um, And in fact, a really complete and thorough understanding of them comes once there is an understanding of love and a connection to God anyway. And so it's sort of like putting the cart before... Well, it's like the old statement that I made in the first century, you know, if you seek first God's love, all of these other things will be added to you. Like, why talk about all the other things when if you seek first God's love, all the other things you'll know? Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem to make much sense to yeah. me to put, like you say, the cart before the horse, you know? Yeah. 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 So they're, they're questions that don't interest us that much. No, you know, sometimes they're interesting or sometimes we're talking to an audience who that's the only point of contact that they have and they've not considered anything else, so we we'll talk about it then. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're talking to an audience who are just fascinated about that subject and have no other fascinations, so then we feel like, oh, well, you know, that's what they want to hear about, so we might talk about it. But it's not something that we feel driven to talk about much we're not, ourselves. We're not going to dedicate hours and hours of our life, major creative time of creating divine truth teachings on those kind of subjects. No, no. no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Questions or interactions mm-hmm. where we already know the answers 
and the person talking to us already knows the answers. This happens quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but there's just a feeling in the person who's asking the question that they just kind of, they want to um, get a nice little feeling about, oh, we both believe this one, this same thing and we both... Or they want to have a feeling of confirmation yeah. or they want to have a feeling that, oh, look what I now know. You know, yeah. or they, daddy. you know, there's, yeah. Yeah, daddy, daddy, look what I now know. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing how many people treat me like <laughs> yeah. daddy. It's yeah. a big problem. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, must, I must be looking pretty old nowadays because <laughs> oh, it happens no. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, you know, those kind of things don't attract us very much. It's basically two people scratching each other's back saying the same thing and, and we don't get much involved in that kind of discussion. No, well, it doesn't <laughs> sort of, doesn't help anyone grow. It's no. not really, um, yeah. It's there's... often driven by some addictive emotions yeah. too. You know, addictions to have approval or acceptance or to have agreement or to have somebody come along and say, yeah, you did a good job there, isn't it wonderful? Or, you know. Those kind yeah. of addictions. Yeah. Um, this is another good one. Questions or interactions where people want to give us all of the details. So they don't want to just tell us that they went to town in the car. They want to tell us that they went to town and the road was gravel and then they went over a pothole and the car was blue and the sun was shining and then there was a bird and then they got to town. And then the thing they want to talk about happened when they got to town. And usually and that's the, a little part of the <laughs> yeah. conversation. The thing they actually want to ask the question about is like a tiny part of the whole thing they said. And sometimes they write pages and pages like about the sky being blue and the panel yeah. being red and the, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, yeah, wall yeah. being white and yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, and they get to the thing and you go, do you even realise that you just buried yeah. your question in yeah. a whole heap of superfluous data? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, it, this comes from an, another addictive emotion, actually, where people want you to share in every single tiny little aspect of their life. It's an addiction. That's why Facebook and, and what's the other, Twitter, Twitter and all those yeah. things got created because people want you to share in every little thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and often they send us an email like that where they want us to share every little thing that happens and experience every little emotion along with yeah. them as we're reading through their life story. And honestly, you've got some major addictions when yeah. you send us a, something yes. like that. Yes. And, and it's very hard for us to read it. It is. And it's quite um, a demand on our Time. It's sort of a sucking feeling again. Of and, course it is. And, yeah. you know, again, I've I've definitely had that addiction with you, haven't I? Just, oh, I realise this. Oh, I realise that. Oh, I had this experience. And I said, and, get to the point. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> or even just that as I as I do progress and, and start to grow, you know, in my, my own sense of self and yeah. my own relationship with God, there's not this addictive desire to have another person share, share in, in every discovery in and fact also, it feels quite demanding but now. also the other thing it doesn't acknowledge is the truth that the other person can already feel your emotion about it anyway yes and and this is another thing that i find is people have little understanding of ourselves and particularly of myself yeah. that i already can feel their emotions so therefore i already feel the experience as soon as they mentioned oh, i went to this shop the other day i can feel the entire experience yeah. They don't have to share it with me. Yeah. They just need to talk about what it is they they noticed, and what it is they would like answers to, or yes, whatever. Yes. And that's all they have to do. I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have to go along for the ride with them. And to be honest, I feel it's very addictive thing to be involved in wanting other people to ride along yes. in your life. You know, it's like it's a it's a desire to seek empathy from people, mm -hmm. and and it is actually an addiction to seek mm -hmm. empathy from people when they don't have to have empathy for you. And even if they did, the, the more developed a person is, the more they will have empathy for right. you. But they don't need you to tell them. Like, they will already feel it, you know? Yeah, and it is a beautiful thing, I feel, as I become more sensitive and open and less in that addiction, I immediately start to feel that you can feel uh, what I'm feeling and that you do have empathy and care for me. Whereas before in that addiction, I was trying to elicit a, a feeling that you had those things for me and I couldn't feel it because I wasn't sensitive and I yeah. was demanding it. And I remember early days in our conversation, sometimes you'd say, I'd say, look, 
Mary, don't have to say what you're going to say. I already know what you're feeling. She'd say, what? And Mary, you would say, what is it then? <laughs> right? And I go, this is what you were going to say. Blah, 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 blah. She goes, oh, oh. yeah, so it was. <laughs> it's sort of like, and then it's like, next time, what is it then? Go, so it was. And after a while, you get to trust that actually, yeah. no, the person is far more in tune with you than you realise. And your demand for their in tunement is not even you can't even feel that they're in tune yes like you can't yeah. you're not even feeling them yeah like so i had a conversation i know with Igor the other day about some technicals and he he couldn't feel that i was really getting him yeah. and so he wanted to tell his whole story and i'm going but i already know the whole story this is you know yeah. like i get it like you don't have to tell me anything yeah. but i feel like i have to you know it's like <laughs> it, and i want to tell you everything i want I to know. tell you yeah. and, and yeah. that feeling that I, I get that feeling from a lot of people yeah and and that feeling, firstly, doesn't acknowledge that I obviously can feel them. Yeah. Secondly, it doesn't acknowledge, too, that there is an addiction involved, and that is of wanting the person to share the experience of your joy or your satisfaction yeah. or your yeah. discovery or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and these kind of uh, feelings projected, obviously, are addictive in nature, and so it's very hard for me to respond to them. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I have begun to have just some experiences of that where I'm on the other side of it now, where I can feel the person and start speaking and I know what's the emotion driving them and the details a lot of times the story yeah and and you there and it's like yeah 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 yep yep. (laughs) and and if I interject at the beginning and say look this is the principle of love that I know is being ignored they still feel like no you don't get it because you haven't heard the whole story yes when I'm going no I do I get it um it's just that I can feel it now and before I needed you to tell me the story. And this is the yeah. thing, is that when you do things God's way, everything is a lot more rapid. Yeah, it's awesome, Because everything is, is rapidly understood because you can feel the emotion coming from the person. So you rapidly understand everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. And, and people who are not in that state mm-hmm. don't understand the rapidity, how fast, how fast. everything becomes. Yeah. And so quite often you're 10 steps ahead of a person because you're feeling the emotion from them of what they're going to say and feeling the words of what they're going to say before they've got out of their mouth, Yeah. before those words have come out of their mouth. And it's very off-putting, I suppose, for the person because they yeah, feel like they've got to go through the laughing. whole thing. But, <laughs> but it is. the reality is if you both can communicate that way, the, 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 how fast you can resolve situations intensifies hundreds hundreds of folds yes. like you, you you can go from spending an hour discussing something to two minutes discussing mm-hmm. it, one minute discussing it and both of you knowing with emotional satisfaction that you get and understand the entire thing yeah and, yeah. and it's just wonderful yeah. and you can think you think about it if you're in that state you can process ha- huge amounts of information yeah. in very short amounts of time Awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we'd encourage those people who try to tell the long <laughs> stories involved in the whole thing to realize that once you work through your soul based issues and you really connect it to your soul, you'll know when somebody gets you. Yeah. You'll know when they don't. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what words come out of their mouth or their facial expressions, you'll know either way whether they get you or don't. And this is a beautiful thing that does happen with us. Like we still have exchanges where I don't trust. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, be, I'm beginning to trust very much that you know where I'm coming from and I'm beginning to feel that you feel that. But also but you're starting to trust that I'll tell you when I don't know. That's, yes. You, you, like yes. I often say, uh, Mary, no, I don't get what you're saying now. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. And, 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 and if I'm not saying that to you, then you know then you, I do get it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, so there's that, um, that feeling where okay, now I, I can trust that he knows where I'm coming from and he'll tell me if not. Mm-hmm. But there's still some times where I feel like, no, I have to tell you because you're <laughs> not getting it. And then there was a third thing that I that related to what you were saying and it's just gone out of about my head. About the experience? Like wanting to share the experience no, with me? No, it was about, um, oh, it's gone, Sorry. it doesn't matter. It's yeah. fine, it's fine. Um but it was something related to when people ask us questions and send us emails and and just um, trusting in that process. But yeah, a lot of times I feel from them that they don't trust the fact that we can feel what they're saying to us and understand it clearly. Yeah. And then when we respond, they think, oh, 
I didn't expect that response. So they mustn't have understood what we're saying to them yes. in the first place. Yeah. So then, then they say the same thing back to us again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. we often have done that in conversations in the past. Where yes. I say, Mary, I understand what you're saying. And you'd go, and you go, no, he doesn't understand. I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand. So you'd say exactly <laughs> the same thing. He needs to know this detail. Then he'll know that it's a different scenario. Go, no, I did get it. You know, like yeah. I did get it. What you don't get is I got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can't feel that I got yeah. it, right? Yeah. And then they say it again. And, and we often get that in email exchanges where we we say back a response, the person acts like we mustn't have understood the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we did. Yeah. You just don't understand where you're coming from most of the time, right? But but mm -hmm. we did understand the question and we can feel it. So yeah. we do. They did understand the question. We're giving you a response based on what we feel from you. Yes. And, and you, you don't get that, right? Yes. So they think, oh, they didn't understand. So we'll send it back and we'll say it in a whole different way, but yeah. about the same thing. And we tell the same story again. Yeah. And then after about three frustrating attempts <laughs> of doing this and us going, no, we already got that. Our mm -hmm. original email applies. No, it doesn't because blah, yeah. blah, blah. And we say, no, it, our original email applies. You just don't get the answer yet. You haven't even given enough thought to, to understand it yet. Our original email still applies, right? Yes. And, and in the end, a lot of people just walk away frustrated. Well, I, I don't know what's going on there, but I still don't get it. You know? <laughs> and that's because the soul is not engaged yet. Yeah. yeah. The, so when the soul's engaged, you'll understand that we're feeling your feelings. Mm -hmm. We're responding to your feelings. We're, we're not going to share in your experience mm. because we don't feel any need to share your experience. And in, if you have an emotional demand upon us to share your experience, we already feel you're out of harmony with love. Yeah. Your experience is your experience. God created you to be a free thinking, free feeling, free acting individual so that you could learn to have your own experience. Yeah. Not so that I can have your experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is what, you know, this is what, why we're not that drawn to answer those kind yeah. of questions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And it's a great way for people to work through those you know, those addictions and the feelings that underlie them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Mm. <laughs> it's a funny subject though because... It is. I could talk about it all day. Yeah, because, because it, it, it's, it's funny, so isn't much. it? When, we're, when you can feel me and I can feel you, the speed at which we can do all sorts of things is like intensely increased. Increased. By factors of multitudes, <laughs> you know. And, and yet when that's oh. not the case... It can take hours. It take, can take an hour just to work out the fact that you haven't even asked the right question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you're trying to give an answer that the yeah. person already knows what you're trying to say and you think that they don't, yeah. you know, all these kinds of things. Yeah. And, that, and so the more you grow and tune in to the feelings, the more you'll understand about what's going on around you. You yeah. will know more about people, not less. Yeah. You will know more about what they're trying to say. You will know more about their life without them even telling you. you once you become a celestial spirit, you can walk up to the person and know everything about them without them opening your mouth. You don't, a celestial spirit does not need to hear your story because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he feels a whole lot of it. He yeah. already has, he's absorbed it emotionally already. Yes. He's already been loving enough to absorb your whole story emotionally. Yeah. That's how loving he is. Yeah. And, and, and so he doesn't need to hear it again. And, and no matter what he hears from you, He's still not going to be able to hear it as good as what he can get it from your soul directly and actually experience it emotionally. Yes. And yeah. once you understand that all the words coming out of your mouth are really superfluous most of the time mm. when a person is capable it's, of feeling, yeah. then you start realising that you can be a lot more succinct and, and <laughs> with, with your words. The only reason why we spend a lot of time explaining things very down to the nth degree yep. is because the listener is not in that state. That's right. If they were in that state, we don't need to do it. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. So it's a loving thing that we do it. Yes. But, but it, you know, it's not something that attracts us, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're attracted to our conversations with our mates in the celestial spheres. Yeah. And uh, who, who can feel straight away what's going on. Yeah. And respond straight away to the feelings. Yeah. It's just wonderful. It is. It's yeah. great. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so other things that don't really interest us. Um, 
so, well, really questions or interactions that don't result in the growth of the people that we're speaking to or other people who will listen or watch the discussion later. Yeah, like somebody had a breakdown of their car the other day and they're not willing to discuss the reason why it occurred emotionally or whatever. Like they just want to talk to you about how they broke down and they went here and they went there and they got this happened and that happened and everything. Honestly, it's like a whole heap of detail about somebody's life that is not my experience and there's no need for me to even feel about it. Yeah, and that probably leads to the next sort of thing, which is just things that are conversations where people want to talk about details that are quite materialistic or just um, by the by, the weather, the the roads, the just things that Politics, are, um, the changes of a certain, like, honestly, there's a lot more going on on the planet than what the newspaper or media or anything anybody can share with you. Mm -hmm. And once you understand what's really going on and once you can feel it, you're not as interested in reading about it because mm. almost everything you read is false. Mm -hmm. Every, almost everything you read doesn't match the emotion that, that you can feel even from the person you're reading it who yes. wrote it. Yes, and mm. I find that those things, they, they focus very much <coughs> what feels to me now to be quite a narrow view of what is truth, what are solutions, what is um, the scope of the problem even, what are the, the issues that are actually creating the problem. It's usually um, a very, very shallow mm. view of the world's uh, issues and problems affairs yeah mm. current affairs yeah you know th there's so many or even an individual's current affairs <laughs> yes yeah yeah uh, even most people have very little understanding about what's really going on in their personal life in a global sense based in, on an emotional consideration of it yeah and and so you multiply that by seven billion people and of course the whole world is in that state yeah. and when you can feel all that emotionally and everyone has the capacity to do it um, with development, you know, particularly with the reception of God's love, then there's no need to discuss it all or, you know, rave on about it or yeah. postulate or theorise or philosophise yeah. or yeah. so forth and so forth. Yeah, yeah. It is either real or not real. Yeah. yeah. The not real doesn't even get discussed anymore. Yeah. Because you know it's not real. Yeah. You can feel it's not real. Yeah. You can feel from God it's not real. And, and I'm really interested in speaking about solutions to what are global issues, but real solutions, not, uh, you know, not... Not the philosophies of men. Yeah. Who are just postulating concepts and ideas that have been postulated a thousand times before if you look through history. Yeah, and they've never worked. And they've never worked. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, we've touched on this also just people who are self-involved, who are lying, who are exaggerating, all these kinds of interactions don't really interest us either. They're not based in truth. Well, they're, again, addictive yeah. interactions on their part. Yeah. And yeah. most, we could probably lump all of these things into addictive. When you're, when you're wanting an interaction with another person that, that has a whole heap of addictions on your part, mm -hmm. then if the other person's sensitive emotionally, they can feel that you're not being honest with them. Yeah. They can feel you're not, you're, not, you're not being fully disclosing. They can feel when you're not being open. They can feel when you're not being transparent. They can feel when you're not being humble. Mm -hmm. They can feel when you're being a bit condescending or a bit arrogant. They can feel all those things. Yeah. And, and of course, they're going to be very sensitive to that. Yeah. And so it's highly unlikely they're going to respond to those particular things. Yeah. Now, if they feel there is some bigger picture, big, some bigger subject that's worth discussing they will focus on that yeah. but which we do but yeah. but if a person sending us an individual email with those demands it is like <clears throat> it's like we said it just doesn't interest us very much yeah mm. and the final thing um that we wanted to talk about is just people we're not that interested in engaging with people who are very pessimistic and they don't have any desire to shift from that mm. cynical pessimistic stance within themselves yes so Pessimism then, and cynicism are emotions that are very uh, preventative emotions with regard yes. to love and truth. Yeah. They, they do prevent the flow of love and truth into the soul. Mm. They're driven by deep fears and anger inside yeah. the individual that needs to be released before anything real can be felt yeah. and, and also before anything real can be shared. And yeah. so, you know, it's very hard for us to 
have a strong desire to overcome a person's pessimism or mm -hmm. overcome a person's cynicism before we share something with them. Yeah. We feel that they need to go away and work through the emotional reasons why they're pessimistic or, cynicistic, cyn and, or, or cynical, cynical yeah. and, and, and deal with the emotional reasons first so that they can hear what's being shared. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit concerning, I think, that cynicism is also almost become fashionable on the planet and it's almost viewed now as realism and yes it's not it's, realism at all no from god's perspective it's totally unreal yeah. in fact yeah. like god is a positive god definitely never cynical, cynical and never sarcastic yeah. never cynical never pessimistic mm -hmm. god has no reason to be pessimistic because everything god has it, it, everything God has designed is good. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. it, everything works exactly as God designed it to work. So there's no cynicism on his part. So, so when a person is cynic, cynical or, you know, sarcastic or belittling, pessimistic. pessimistic and all those negative types of emotions, it's because they want to justify that condition to themselves. Yeah. So they either don't have to act or don't have to do something or mm -hmm. don't have to see something different or don't have to love or, or just or grieve. accept truth yeah. or just grieve or yeah. just not want to feel an emotion or whatever. Yeah. And they need to see that. Yeah. And if they're unwilling to see it, then there's little that can be done to help them get beyond that point yes. of you know, of their negative condition. Yeah. 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 So I understand why people are cyn cynical living in the world we live in, but I don't understand why people are cynical with God mm. because God didn't design the world we lived in. He designed the laws that govern the interaction with the world we live in. Mm. And when I say he didn't design it, he obviously designed the earth, but, but he, he designed the laws that govern the operation of the earth. And, and if those laws are engaged in a loving manner, we would have no disease, no illness, no problems, no wars, no, mm -hmm. no anything painful on this planet. Yeah. And in fact, most of us would live for thousands of years instead of tens or hundreds. Yeah. And, um, and all of our problems would be resolved. And God knows all that. That's mm -hmm. why God's very optimistic. <laughs> but he's, he, he, he also realises that most people on earth are living in a place that, are, that is completely unreal, mm -hmm. that is completely like absorbed in fear yes. uh, without the ability to perceive what the possibilities are and so god while god allows that condition to to be satisfied through our own desire he obviously won't agree with it mm -hmm. and and we find when you become closer to god sorry i'm just going to have a cough <coughs> <coughs> yeah when we become closer to god we're not drawn into this pessimism and cynicism either, you know. Mm. And I know when I first met you, you were quite very, pessimistic, weren't you, babe? And, very cynical. And, you know, now I can feel optimism from you. Yeah. And you can see that it's only by releasing certain emotions that you've become more optimistic. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of fear. Yeah. Mm. Fear. Yeah. Um, and false beliefs and grief, really. Grief yes. about... Um, and it's hard to share an optimistic teaching, which is, a, which is about God, God's love, God's truth, yeah. the way it changes your life, transforms you, transforms your soul, living forever, you know, yeah, in that yeah. state of happiness. It's hard to share a, such an optimistic <laughs> teaching with, a people, with people who are cynical and yeah. depressed and, and pessimistic. Yeah, and, and I suppose rigid in the desire to hold on to that yes. as truth. Yes. And I think that's where I was. And when even I argue you. for that truth. Yes, yeah. arguing for it and saying, no, that is the truth and we have to be realistic. Yeah. And that, I mean, that is such a painful state to live in. Yeah. But it, for, for anyone to try and teach me in that state, well, you it's know, very hard. so hard. Very yeah. hard. It's exhausting, actually, on the teaching yeah. side because yes. you're having to overcome all these terribly negative emotions yeah. before you can share anything with the person. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, these kind of emotions all exist in the hells. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can, we can let ourselves out of the hells yeah. is by, by actually feeling and experiencing and releasing those emotions yeah. from our emotional condition. Yeah. And that requires going through an emotional experience. And, and unless we're willing to go through the emotional experience, if we're so pessimistic and cynical, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to hear any truth yeah. and certainly very difficult for us to love. Yeah. 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 Mm.
Okay. Well, that's a that's a good little summary of just the kind of interactions that don't really interest us. No, you know, it's not like you know. Sometimes we're drawn into them because yeah. of the circumstances, but you know, it's sometimes they're a bit sort of twiddly thumb <laughs> type of, you know, where they're, yeah. they're not like they're not in. We engage them. Obviously, there's sometimes when people have sincere issues that are raised that are who have these kind of issues, mm -hmm. and we are often. Well, it's rare for us to not be engaged with people we meet, and particularly for myself, like every person I meet, I'm focused. They, I focus my attention on them. I feel mm -hmm. what they are feeling. I focus my attention on on them. But uh, but honestly, not not every person's projections back interest me to engage. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. person themselves, yes, that interests me. Yeah. But if the person is trying to not be the person themselves, then it's very hard to remain interested. Yes. Because yeah. I'm just getting a false. Yeah. A false. Yeah. There's, the feelings are completely different to what's being presented. Yes. And yeah. when a person remains rigid in the scope of of like wanting to hold on to facade or wanting to remain in, you know, direct conversation in a very limited way, mm. then it's hard to stay interested in that kind of conversation. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're in, we're, we enjoy personally when we come to recreationally, yeah. we enjoy personally the conversation and experience with people who are optimistic and yeah. not cynical. They don't yeah. feel hopeless. They feel hopeful. Yeah. You know, these are all the qualities of people who've received some of God's love. And, and enjoy the experience of receiving it and enjoy the change that it's imposed upon their life through yeah. the experience rather than people who go, oh, it's all terrible, it's all bad, <laughs> and it's all terrible, and look what I've got to do, and it's all painful. Like yeah. even we feel that you can feel your personal pain without imposing it upon others. Yeah, you certainly can. and perhaps that's, uh, we mentioned about when we met how just I felt very much uh, very cynical and very rigid in that yep. but something that I needed to pass through in order to get out of that was stopping projecting that outwards mm -hmm. on others as a as a rigidity and just to allow myself even to be in company that is optimistic to 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 stop trying to control conversation and just let the more open more loving more truthful conversations bring up those feelings in me mm. rather than trying to control and direct my external circumstances to agree with these emotions in me. The, mm. A turning point for me was just opening up and letting those conversations happen and it helped me to trigger those feelings. And once I was humble enough to feel some of them, wow, well, then my outlook changes. I become more positive and more truthful yes. just naturally. And also you become a happier individual too because you're not driven by pessimism or yeah. cynicism or, yeah. or sarcasm or any of those other emotions that tend to drive. And even today, like you said, uh, people tend to feel uh, hypocritical even. You don't even think they're cool anymore to feel no. those things because yeah. you realise that they are just false. Yeah. They're, they're not anything to do with God's reality. Yeah. They are the world's reality, I agree, yeah. but they're not God's reality. Yeah. And once you become closer to God, you don't feel them as your reality either. We did a, a, a radio interview in England mm. a couple of years ago and um, we came into the studio and the man there who was interviewing us was he had the strong belief that he was very well educated and very kind of hip, and up, cool. hip up to the moment yeah. and he was doing the world a service by exposing us terrible and he had, stuff. Hundred, he had a million twitter followers and well, i had none yes <laughs> and it's pretty hard to have one when he tried to account, <laughs> shame you about the lack of twitter followers and as if that was some kind of you know <laughs> statement about your validity as a human exactly um yeah and i did i he was very it was very nasty feelings he had towards us but uh, but it, it was also very sad i felt very sad, sad because him, yeah. i understood like where he was coming from and mm. and it's a sad place, place that, yeah. that he's living in there it's a very um what i would classify as a it's it's like trying to peer at he the heavens from the hells. Yeah. You've got all this mud and yeah. darkness and, you know, grey emotion and feeling to project your way through in order to see yeah. the heavens. And yeah. when you're looking at the hells from the heavens, it looks completely different, of course. It's, yeah. it's all to do with perspective. Yes. And when your perspective, emotional perspective has changed, 
because yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Progression in, in in God's way is all about your emotional perspective changing. Yeah. And when your emotional perspective changes, you no longer feel as pessimistic as a person who has the perspective coming from living in the hills or having a background of still having those emotions yes. of, 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 you know, fear and anger and resentment and harm and hurt and grief and all all these emotions which cause your perspective to be highly distorted from God's perspective. Yeah. And in that state, from having been in it, looking to heaven is just a feeling of wanting to judge it and... and Not even that. Most of it can't... Most people from that place can't even see it. That's right. They're They're literally blind to even seeing its possibility, let alone it. Yeah. And that's the reality of the hellish condition. And the hellish condition is a result of all the emotion that we've got contained within us still that we're not allowing ourselves to experience. And so obviously, you know, we want to help people from that place. But obviously people who are unwilling to move from that place cannot be helped. You know, you have to first recognise that that place has problems and yeah. that you want to have a different solution to your problems before you can move from that place. Yeah. And we find that a lot of people in the world uh, are cynical, uh, sarcastic and you know pessimistic, but they have, as you said, no desire to move mm. from that place. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like living in the hellish condition trying to trying to see everything around you while at the same time wanting to remain in the hellish condition yeah which which is very very difficult to help yes and and almost having an arrogant viewpoint of saying that the hellish condition is, is reality s- is reality is superior to people who have hope and things like that oh, well yeah they look down upon people who mm. are optimistic because they believe the person who's optimistic is not being real yeah. They believe that that they're psychotic or something, <laughs> or stupidly or stupid. naive or something. Yeah. You know, terrible judgmental yeah. feelings. So, and that's a part of the hellish condition to have judgmental feelings towards people who have a more optimistic viewpoint of life. Mm. And and what we're suggesting is that when you're sitting in that place, it's very very hard for you to even conceive that that heaven exists, mm. let alone it being real. Right, yeah. and it's also very hard for you to conceive that what you're feeling is not real, yeah. but rather just your feelings about it. Yes, you know it's very hard to conceive that rather as well. Rather just mud obscuring reality. Yes, it's saying no. The well, I, mud is reality. <laughs> yeah, it's like putting on a pair of muddy glasses and then looking around your life and going, "That's real." Yeah, and, and somebody comes along and goes, "No, you could just take off your glasses," and you go, "No, no, no." That's unreal if yeah. I do that. This yeah. is real. Yeah. And so you leave the glasses on. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what they're doing. But yeah. they don't even realise they're doing that. No. And that's the sad thing. It is sad. So that's why, you know, when we see people in that place, it's, it is sometimes sad to reflect about how far they have to go before they'll even accept any truth. Mm. Um, mm. There's, a, there's a lot of resistances they'll have to overcome. Yeah. Which mm. are, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a whole other discussion we Yeah, we need to. Yeah. That's a whole emotion. Probably suits the emotional. <laughs> the emotions and emotions feelings. Emotions and feelings yeah. section that does. Yeah. That discussion yeah. about how, and maybe we need to just take a note about that. Just yeah. how, you know, the perspective of reality is severely distorted by the emotions that you have within you. Yes. yes. And once you've released those emotions, you will look at life completely differently than you currently do. You, you, you will also perceive reality as being completely different to what you expected it to be when you're in that state. Yeah. So we need to talk about that at some point. Yeah, so let's do let's that. Let's do that. Yeah. But let's finish off that <laughs> sure. there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Why don't you allow comments on your YouTube channels? Yes. So uh, this is all about do I want feedback from people? <laughs> And people ask this question because they say that they want a forum to discuss what we're presenting. Yeah, we don't want to give them a forum to discuss what we're presenting. We feel the forum, which Nikki has created, can be a forum for discussion. Yeah. The reason why we don't give people a forum to discuss ourselves because we haven't got the time to monitor it mm-hmm. and we haven't got the time to make sure that the forum remains loving. Yeah. 
So yeah. in that case, we would be creating a forum where people could actually go and be unloving, which is like which is the opposite, opposite of what we're teaching. What, what so that's, that's number one. Yeah. And then one of the reasons why we've helped Nikki create his forum, which mm -hmm. we've now linked you know, on, on our, our website, website yeah. is because he has the strong desire to maintain the integrity of the forum to the to the um, what I feel to the standard that we feel the forum needs to be maintained. And we've had long discussions with him about that by phone and email and so forth. And, uh, and we really enjoy what he's doing there. Yeah. But we haven't got the personal time to maintain it. So, because we're, we're busy creating, we don't yeah. want to maintain things. Yeah. So that's number one. Second reason why is because I don't want to hear from people about their comments about what I teach. I have no need to hear from it. I'm not needing your response, positive or negative. Yeah. Um, I don't. You don't have an addiction. Ad, have or an a, addiction about wanting to hear from five thousand people how great that was, or, or how negative that was. Uh, I don't care, <laughs> to be frank. Yep. I know it's the truth. Yep. I'm going to share it. Yep. And what you think of it is really up to you. And I don't need to know your opinion of it even. And you're not invested in people loving us or people like, or hating us hating or us anything or, in between I, yep. like it doesn't worry me what you think of our material it really doesn't i'm presenting it because i know it to be true mm -hmm. and one day in your long life ahead of you you may discover it to be true even if you don't feel it is true right now mm. um, and that's okay to me how long that takes you is also okay to me I, like if you want to take ten thousand years doing that that's up to you you will have ten thousand years of life to mm -hmm. do it so, so you can take 10,000 years if you want to take 10,000 years. You've got an opportunity now to take a lot shorter period of time mm. if you really wanted to. But that, again, is up to you. you. Like I feel everything's up to you. I don't need to know what your decision is yeah. about that. So, so, I'm, so when I say I'm not interested in your decision, of course I'm interested in it <laughs> in the sense that I would love for you to make a wise decision and, and actually focus firstly on your relationship with God because then your whole life's going to change significantly and you're going to love it. But, <laughs> but in the end, I don't need you to make that decision. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not in some codependent addiction with you sharing this information. Yeah. All I want to do is share the information. And so that there's no reason. For, I, I don't even get the time to read people's comments anyway. So, so it's, it's disrespectful of me to allow comments and then not read them. Mm -hmm. So even that would be unloving. Yeah. Um, but, but there's so many reasons why we don't allow or don't allow comments on all of our sites yeah. that we do. Yeah. And we feel that while Nikki, we feel Nikki is doing a great service to people yep. in allowing a forum that is run in, in a way that we feel it should be run. Yep. We also do feel that it, from a maintenance perspective, it's going to take Massive. a lot of Nikki's time yep. or a group of people that he educates time yep. to maintain the integrity of that forum. Yeah. And we are not interested in maintaining the integrity of a forum. We're only interested in maintaining the integrity of our YouTube channels and our website and what we present and do. Yeah. That's what we're interested in maintaining the integrity of. So just to summarise what you've said, mm -hmm. one, we're not interested in, in creating a forum, especially because if we were to do that in integrity, we would need to maintain the um, this condition of love on that on such a forum and we don't have time to do that, yes. just as a basic thing. Yes, and even Second, as Nikki's finding out yes. in our interactions with him, that that is a quite a difficult task and we've had to point out quite a number of things which were out of harmony with love yeah. it, that he even has accepted yes. so so you know it takes time for a person to even work their way through the issues as to why they're exactly. accepting certain behaviors exactly yeah. Yeah. so yeah. we we don't want to in, we, we've got too many other things that we need to, that do. We need to do while we think the forum is a wonderful opportunity for people and we certainly will share on it at times mm -hmm. we don't feel that we personally can maintain it yes mm -hmm. yeah uh, second is, it's not like we're presenting a theory or something that needs a consensus. It's something that we have experience in that we know is truth and we just want to offer it as a gift to other people who want to receive it. It's and we're not philosophizing about it or pontificating about it. We yeah. are we're just <laughs> presenting it and letting yeah. it be. And just saying, look, if you're interested, you're interested. If you're not, no, you're, you're not. not. <laughs> and we don't really need to hear from you about it because... Whether you're interested or not. <laughs> you know, yeah. we just want to give what we can, however we can. Exactly. And we don't have... 
Thirdly, any sort of codependent addiction or desire for approval or desire to, you know, manage disapproval or desire to or look to even into say, everyone's oh, opinion. wonderful, we've now got 100,000 people listening to yeah. us, isn't that amazing? And, yeah. and 50,000 of those people like us, you know, <laughs> like tick, like, tick, like on the Twitter or whatever. And isn't that wonderful? Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we don't live our lives like that. We are, we are not governed by public opinion in yeah. any way. Yeah. So... And, yeah. and if I ever discover I am, then I'm working hard to remove that from myself correct, correct. rather than to get into some situation where it's driving my actions. You know, yes. I want to live in a way that's by God's laws, governed by what God's definition of love is, and not by and governed by the our opinions pure of desires. others. Exactly. What we purely desire to do. Yeah. Like we don't want to go, oh, we're going to change what we do now because 50,000 Twitter followers told us that, you know, what we're doing they didn't like. Yeah. And to be frank, we also feel that a person who becomes at one with God, a lot of people are possibly not going to like what they do because that person at one with God is going to challenge many people in a lot of different aspects, almost every aspect of their life. Yeah. And so we're not going to easily get the agreement of everybody anyway. So what's the point of even searching yeah. for it or yeah. wanting it? There's no yeah. point in that. Yes. So, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why we just don't do it. Uh, besides the fact that it's maintenance time mm -hmm. where you've got to look at what's happening, you've got to police it, you've got to get rid of the people who are being unloving if you're truly doing it properly. And people who are being unloving not just towards us but towards the other commenters and, you know, yeah. it just is a compounding issue. And unfortunately a lot of these places also give people the opportunity to troll and to, yes. and to be really nasty and we don't want to give people that opportunity and we certainly don't want to have to then police those people and, you know, control their behaviour in any way. Yeah. So we'd rather just not have any comments like that at all. Yeah. And we just present the information and we're just going to keep presenting new information. That's what we want to do. Keep creating, keep presenting new information, create a huge library of truth for anybody in the world who wishes to seek truth in their heart. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for. We're not even looking to adv to market, market it. Yeah. We are certainly going to advertise it, yeah. which is a very different process. To let people know, hey, to this let exists. Know it's available, yeah. But we never want to force it down anyone's throat. No. Or so we're never going to market it. You know, to you're never going to see an advert on telly <laughs> talking about divine truth. Yeah. You're never going to see it. You, you know, there there will be. You know, there might be times where it's in a newspaper or something, but that's even highly unlikely because yeah. we feel we've got a forum already with the yeah. internet where we can advertise events and we can advertise what's happening on and people can search for it if they want to. And it's the most effective way of sharing information with people. There's no need for us to go to great lengths of other things. Yeah. People will desire for us to be there or not. Mm -hmm. And when they're not, we'll be here. Yeah in this beautiful little place it's now scary. that we've got to film a whole heap of new information. Yeah. And, and honestly, it doesn't matter to us whether 100,000 people or a million people, the whole world wants to know. It doesn't matter to us whether it's five people or the whole world. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter whether the whole world hates us or the whole world loves us even. At the end of the day, people's emotions are fickle based on their particular things that they're suppressing. Yeah. And public opinion is not something that drives our desire to do what we do. No. So. Gosh, if it was, we probably would have given up a fair while ago. A long time ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, our feelings are no comments on any of our websites ever. No. No comments on any of that, like on our YouTube channels. There will be no Twitter channels that we ever have. Mm. There will be no Facebook channels that we ever have yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And we do not understand to a large degree why anybody even who knows us wants to set up those particular things. Yeah. We have worked with it, with um, Nikki okay. with the forum because we believe it's a great way to, to manage these kind of things. And it's not intrusive no. in the sense that a person must sign up to it yeah. in order to engage the forum yeah. and and so we feel it's driven by desire whereas a facebook feed isn't you just share it with 100 people and everybody who whether they like what you're doing or not has to listen to it yeah that's not they're love. exposed to it anyway they're exposed yeah. to it when yeah. they didn't want to be yes. they have to say no before, before they, they say, say yes. yes which is something yeah. i brought up in a previous session like 
if a person has to say no to you before they've said yes, mm -hmm. then you're out of harmony love before you begin. Yeah. So with all of our sites, what we do is we say, right, you have to say yes to us before mm -hmm. you'll receive information. Yeah. And if you don't want to say yes to us, that's fine. You just won't get the information. And that's how it should be. Yes. Yeah. And that's how we're going to make everything. Yeah. So I think I think that's wonderful. Yes, so right. do I. Yeah. And it engages the will of people. It's so great. You people, know, people get to exercise their will muscle yeah. and say, I want this. Yeah. And I'm going to I want to engage ask. this. I'm and going I, to subscribe. And I'm what I love about what Nicky's doing, I, that he's, he's showing people on a daily basis, this is unloving behavior. This is loving behavior. This is unloving behavior. You're in an addiction now. This is unloving behavior. If you have three addictions in a row, you shouldn't even be here because you, you're not working on them. You know, yes. you're not being sincere. Yeah. And, and he's showing them on a daily basis. Now, that's a very loving thing to do that he's yeah. doing. But we have not personally got the time to do it and also do everything else we, right. we want to do. And we should probably say that we wouldn't be even sort of, I suppose we're endorsing what Nick is doing. Yeah. We wouldn't be if we didn't know that he had, he didn't have such a strong desire for Correct. his, to grow his own integrity, to grow his own soul towards God, all of those things. Correct. And if that, he sometime in the future walked away from it all, we couldn't endorse it anymore. No, that's right. Uh, or if he walked away from love, we couldn't endorse it anymore because, because it's, like what we love about it, mm -hmm. what, about what he's doing, is that it is driven by his love for people and also he is trying to make the forum itself be a loving environment for the first time. There's been no one up to this point who's done that, no. who's tried to make it a purely loving environment based been, on the principles we teach. Exactly, and willing to act to address unloving behaviour swiftly and And even personally and get attacked for it, and get which he's already getting, right? Yes. And but it, it, I, yeah, I feel he's doing a wonderful service, but it is a time-consuming service. Very time-consuming. Not and we personally don't have the time to to give such a service, which is the reason why we personally have not created a forum up until now. Yeah. 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 But aside from that, yeah, that's the reasons why we don't. Uh, don't have comments on have any comments of our on any of our sites. Productions. I yeah. think it's pretty clear, yeah. and it's also born in a, a deep conviction about love and free will and how free will should be exercised. Yes. Yeah. So we hope that people understand that's the reason why we do what we do. That's it. Yeah. That's great.